Scotland's greatest export, besides her people, may be her whisky. The whisky trail winds for a hundred kilometers through a dozen distilleries and a cooperage from Inverness to Aberdeen. Making whisky is fairly basic. Just take water, barley, and yeast. Stir well, let ferment, run them through a still, and there you have it. Well, not quite. Scotch whisky, for a start, has to be distilled and matured in Scotland, otherwise it's not Scotch whisky. You also need pure water tumbling down from the mountains through granite and peat. And you need malted barley and just the right yeast. It pays to have a picturesque distillery with graceful twin pagoda chimneys, and inside, gleaming copper stills whose size and shape help to determine the character of the finished whisky. And finally, you need plenty of time. Good whisky takes at least 10 to 15 years of quiet contemplation in oaken casks in a darkened bonded warehouse. And we slide the glass. And you need a nose. Not a heavy whisky. Very, very Alan Gregg is with the Strathyla Distillery, home of Shivas Regal, whose parent company is 200 years old. Now when we do a nosing session, this is a very typical glass that we use. It's a sherry copita. And of course the shape is ideal because with the narrow top it tends to hold the vapours of the whisky in the glass. And by using this, which we call a watch glass, on top, again it helps to retain the aromas. So when we're nosing whisky, we give it a little swirl, we slide the top, and we nose the whisky. Most of Scotland's major distilleries are more than a century old, and some proudly trace their roots back to the bad old days when whisky was made in illicit stills, hidden away in the glens to avoid taxes levied by the English. After whisky distilling was licensed in 1823, the industry flourished, and today Scotch whisky enjoys a worldwide following. George Grant is the sixth generation of his family at Glenfarclas Distillery, which was founded in 1836. So they've had time to learn a thing or two about aging whiskey. It just evaporates straight away. To produce Glenfarclas, we would take 60% of the sherry oak, 40% of the plain oak. So we would then add about 50% water to produce a Glenfarclas 10 years old. Glen Fiddick, the name means the Valley of the Stag, is another distillery with a proud history. The first warehouse with its earthen floor and mighty stone walls was built in 1886, but the newest buildings are constructed in the same style to retain the flavor of the past and the flavor of the whiskey. There are about a hundred million liters of what is called Scotland's water of life maturing here at any given time. The only distillery in Scotland that still has its own malting floor is Balvenie. Most distilleries buy their barley from central malting barns, but here at Balvenie, the old skill is still practiced. The barley is dampened and warmed until it germinates to release its fermentable sugars. It must be turned frequently and dried over a peat fire that imbues it with a rich, distinctive flavor. The newborn whiskey finally finds its way into oak casts, which have already been used for American bourbon or sherry. The casks breathe in pure highland air to help mellow the whiskey, but lose about 2% of their precious contents each year. Distillers call it the angel's share. At this point, some whiskies are blended. Others, the single malt whiskies, are bottled and distributed worldwide. Glenfiddich, for example, exports to 190 countries. Distilleries dot the countryside all over Scotland. Most welcome visitors. The Speyside Whiskey Trail is well organized, well signposted, and easy to drive. The trail even includes a genuine working cooperage where young apprentices work alongside seasoned craftsmen to build and repair whiskey casks.
Speyside is only a couple of hours drive from Edinburgh, where Whiskey Law is as close as the castle. In fact, just below in the Whiskey Heritage Centre. There are several differences between malt and grain whiskey. For example, as you already know, malt whiskey is made with malted barley. In just 45 minutes, you'll be treated to a lively look at Scotch whiskey production and whiz through 300 years of history in a rollicking barrel ride, from the earliest home stills hidden in the glens to the English excise men, to jolly King George IV, who enjoyed a wee dram or two, or three. For more information, visit our website on topoftheworld.net.